Open your Bibles with me to the first chapter of Malachi. In Malachi 1, we find that in the first five verses, the Lord is speaking to Israel. In fact, in verse 2, he says, I have loved you, says the Lord. Yet you say, in what way have you loved us? He says, I love you. And in other words, what we find in these first five verses, and then also the whole context of the book of Malachi, is a complete disrespect for the Lord and for his ways that the people of Israel had entered into, and also the priesthood. And so they began to doubt the love of God. They begin to question the love of God. Now, I know that sometimes it's human nature, and that's the problem when it is human nature and not the spirit of God, not a true heart seeking after the ways of the Lord, that begin to question whether God loves us. Perhaps every single one of us at some, at some point have stopped and just said, okay, Lord, you said you love me, but look at what's going on here. Where are you at? You know? Uh, and, but you cannot question the Lord by circumstances in your life. You know, his love... It reigns supreme. He loves us. His love is on the inside of us. His love is always working for us. And what we begin to find is that if we do not grow weary and faint in our endeavors, but we stay true to the Lord and we know and believe the love that God has for us, the scripture says, uh, that we're able to look back at a future time and see how his love carried us through those situations. You know, even in the book of Ephesians, uh, the Apostle Paul said that the love of God cannot be cerebrally understood. It's not an intellectual endeavor. You can study the Word of God and you can try to find out the different nuances of the meaning or application of the Scriptures. But he said the love of God is experientially discerned and revealed in our lives on a daily basis as we walk it out. God wants us to experience him and his love. And so here we find that the Israelites were always questioning God. We're doubting him and doubting his love. Well, he goes on then in the verse, into verse 6, and he shifts a bit toward the priesthood. But listen to this. He said, a son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where's my honor? And if I am a master, where's my reverence? Says the Lord of hosts. To you priests who despise my name. And then they go on and they question and they say, in what way have we despised your name? And then he goes on and tells them all the acts of disobedience. The things that they have done promoted by the flesh promoted by their own self-interests for their own gain, not walking in the respect of the Lord. And so when we look at that verse, that's the one I want to key off of in our sermon today. The Lord says, where is my honor? The Lord told me something this week. I tell you what, I have had a week of intense spiritual warfare. Now that happens at times, and it's not, I'm not saying that from the standpoint of, you know, what a great guy I am, or great warrior, or any of that kind of stuff. I'm, neither am I saying it from a woe is me, you know, the devil's been attacking me. No, I reign in Christ, you know. I clean his clock, we do what needs to be done, and, and it's great. The only reason I'm saying that is in the context of my sermon today, it's important for you to know because of what's going on in the, in the body of Christ on the face of the earth, okay? The Lord spoke to me this week, and he said, honor has been a diminishing quality in America for years, but I am beginning to purge dishonor by restoring honor to my body on earth. You see, honor is a spiritual quality, a dynamic that carries so much importance in the spiritual realm and releases so much spiritual power 
that it's important for us to understand. Indeed, you look at the different cultures that are around the world today. All of them uh, esteem honor in some way. But they do it purely from the natural realm. In the natural realm, uh, honor is a part of different cultures. And some cultures, you know, raise it up a little bit higher than others, so forth. But they're doing it from the standpoint of just earthly respect. What I'm doing is I'm telling you that there is a spiritual dynamic of honor that is extremely important because when honor is diminished in the spiritual realm, then it allows lawlessness, disrespect, dishonor, the removal of spiritual, mental, and physical boundaries. It allows unrestrained indecency to become prevalent in the people and in the culture. Spiritual dishonor has been a problem in the body of Christ for a long time. I think everybody in here has probably experienced it firsthand in one way or another. As a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ, CK and I, for 40 years, have witnessed two things. Number one, there's been many times that people have dishonored us, dishonored the ministry. But number two, that dishonor seem to be growing stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger within the body of Christ up until this year. It has changed. And the Lord has said that he is teaching his people honor. He is bringing honor back. Honor means to value, esteem, and respect. In fact, one of the words for honor in the Bible, both I'm talking about both Old Testament and New Testament, it means something of extreme value. It's talking about the price. It's talking about the worthiness. Another word that's used for honor in the Bible is the word glory. Talking about a weight and a preciousness concerning it. If you value something, you'll esteem it. If you esteem something, you'll respect it. To disrespect what God has placed in our lives is to not esteem it because you do not consider it valuable and do not understand the purposes wherewith God has placed it in your life. It's time for honor to be restored, not only to God, but also to the body of Christ. He said, where's my reverence? The word reverence means a reverential fear. It means to consider something so important, so valuable, so esteemed, so respected, that you are afraid of disrespecting it. You're afraid of dishonoring it. It's not a fear of fleeing in terror. It's a reverence. It's something that is holy. We are to honor and we are to reverence the Lord God. And then he said, you despise my name. Well, the word despise means to disdain, insult, and devalue. When you devalue God or anything that he has set up for your good, you, de you disdain it. You despise it. Now, that should give us some kind of an inkling of how God views when we devalue him and his ways. Now, I'm not preaching this from a legalistic standpoint. I'm preaching this in Revelation. An understanding. 
I had an experience a week ago Saturday, six, eight days ago. I'm going to tell you about it because I wrestled with the Lord whether I should, and I felt like he said, it's okay. I was in prayer, doing a lot of intercession, and the Lord caught me away, and I had an encounter. I had a spiritual vision, and the Lord took me, and he carried me over to the United Kingdom, and in the spiritual atmosphere, the seven, second heaven, I was over the United Kingdom, over Ireland and over Scotland, and of course that's where CK and Kathy Walters and the team and stuff are there. And I looked down and it surprised me. I saw the silhouettes of people that they were involved with, some of the people on the tour. And so I just, just saw silhouettes of, of the people. And there were a few of the people that had a dark spot within them, within their heart. And the Lord said, pray against dishonor and sabotage. He said, the spirits of dishonor and sabotage have brought wickedness, Christian witchcraft, disrespect against the seers. And so I obeyed the Lord. I did exactly that. I prayed. And then the Lord said, that's a common problem in the body of Christ today. He said, the disrespect that I was talking to you about when I talked to you about honor earlier is a work of the enemy to try to stop the move of honor that I am bringing to the land. He said, is a manifestation of retaliation and punishment because the ways of dishonor have been challenged by the church and by the Spirit of God. He said, it's all in line with the election, with President Trump, with Brexit, with all that's happening around the world, all these things, you notice it, you know, when it comes to North Korea, um, when it comes to Russia, China, all these different issues that are going on. I'm talking about even from the minutest scale in our personal lives all the way up to the biggies on the world scene. He said one of the reasons there's so much turmoil is because the way that disrespect and dishonor has been allowed to gain foothold throughout the earth has been challenged by me. I've reversed the direction of it and therefore the retaliation and the punishing angry aspects of dishonor are now manifesting in multiple ways. So he said, pray against the spirit of dishonor and speak the Holy Spirit, the righteous spirit of honor into the body of Christ. And as it takes hold of and grows in the body of Christ, it will take hold of and grow throughout the nation and through the world. That was my experience. Praise God. And so I got a hold of uh, Kathy and CK immediately. I shared the vision with them and they thanked me very much because it was exactly what was going on. Uh, those details I don't wish to go into right now. But uh, it was exactly what was going on. So, we understand honoring the Lord is not only honoring Him, but honoring His ways. You know, you look at the Bible all the way through. If you just do a word study on honor, respect for the Lord, or just in the body of Christ, you'll come up with all kinds of things. 
you'll come up with, uh, first of all, in 1 Timothy 5, 7, the Bible says that the elders who rule well are to be counted worthy of double honor. So the elders in the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry, are to be counted worthy of honor, and those who do very well counted worthy of double honor. Double honor and double respect. In Proverbs 15.33, it says, Before honor is humility. What is humility? Humility is not self-debasement. It is not doormat syndrome. Humility is the understanding of who you are in Christ and that everything that God has for you is good and the willingness to accept it. It doesn't matter who you are, your gender, your age, your ministry, or anything else. It is the willingness to accept what Christ has given you. That is humility. Whether somebody would look at you and consider to you, you to be weak or strong or spiritual or not very spiritual or any of those things have nothing to do with it at all. Humility for each and every one of us is accepting the ways of God, accepting the gifts of God, accepting the work of God in our lives. And so we humbly accept those things according to our individuality, according to our giftedness, our anointings, our ministry, all of those things. There are baseline things that God has for each and every one of us, and then there are out of that specific areas that God is flowing through us individually. Honor is or, or grows out of humility. When we understand ourselves, who we are in the Lord Jesus Christ, what he has done for us, we understand our place and we humbly accept his provision, his protection, his power, his work in our lives, then we are able to show honor not only to the, the way that he is moving through our lives, but the way he is moving through others. When we honor ourselves and the way God is flowing through us, then we can honor those that are around us. We can honor what God is doing, not only through other individuals, but we can honor the systematic chains and levels of authority that he has set up in order to bless us. One of the things that I have told you in just recent sermons is that authority has an origin. All authority exists in a head. In a natural realm, we see it. That somebody's got to be at the top of the chain. But in the spiritual realm, it's the same. In the spiritual realm, there is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Heavenly Father is the head. All authority in the spirit and in the natural realm ultimately comes from the Father. It flows through the Lord Jesus Christ to the Holy Spirit and is released on the earth. On the earth... The scripture tells us that there are specific channels or flows of the release of the blessing and the power of God as that authority hopefully flows and works unchallenged on its way down. In the family unit, there's the husband, the wife. And the children has nothing to do with inferiority, superiority, or any such earthly understanding and manipulation that people get caught up in. It's purely the chain of command, so to speak, the chain of authority, and the chain of the flow of the blessing of God. Honor is a recognizing of that flow and that chain within the body of Christ it is the fivefold ministry and then the people etc you know the bible talks about not only fivefold ministry but then it talks about um, elders and deacons and you know supportive ministries and all kinds of things now I'm not teaching on those things today so I'm not getting in it very heavily at all just enough to make the point. The Bible even talks about 
We studied, I think it was, wasn't it last week? About how that we were supposed to uh, respect the authorities that be, the natural governments, police agencies, and everything else, because they are instruments for God's good against lawlessness in the land. So God's power has a way of flowing down. Now that does not remove the importance of the individual relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. See, our responsibility ultimately is to the Lord. And we do it individually. There's nobody that stands in the gap other than prayer. In the Old Covenant, people had to go to the priest to somewhat get to God. In the New Covenant, Jesus is our priest. We are a kingdom of priests, and he is our high priest. You can get saved all by yourself. Nobody can control that. Nobody can stop that. Unless we become deceived by them. False doctrine or manipulation, control, other things of that nature. But you can do it all by yourself. You can be baptized in the Holy Spirit by yourself. You can be blessed and healed by yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's your relationship with him, man. It's one of grace. It's one of power. It's a great relationship with him. That's important for you to understand. Because that is not diminished in any way by what I'm talking about right now. I'm saying that if you have that personal relationship with him, and he is leading and guiding you by his word and by his spirit on a daily basis, that ultimately will lead you into a position and a place of confidence in who you are so that you can understand the levels and the flow of authority not only that become a blessing to your life but that are important for you to honor and respect before the Lord praise God <laughs> you know in Romans thirteen seven, the Bible says that um, give honor to whom honor is due a lot of times, what we want to do is give honor to people we like. <laughs> you on board with that? <laughs> Man, I'm tempted to do that. But the problem is that's not what the Word says. That negates, stifles, cuts off, strangles to some degree the flow of authority and blessing from God into our lives. Now, some people get a little upset with that. They say, but, you know, I don't like that guy. I don't, you know, that person. They're abusive or whatever. I understand. I understand that. God does not want you to be abused by other people. That's not what I'm talking about. The correction for abuse is not disuse, but right use. In other words, you can honor and respect the position, the person, even if you don't agree with what the person is doing. I've got five main points. I'm kind of getting into those right now, so I'm going to hold off for a second, and then I'll, I'll read them to you, and we'll go through them. In 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, God said, honor me, and I will honor you. How many of you want to be honored by God? Yay! Well, then what? Honor him. How do you honor him? Well, pastor, I'm just going to... I got to get out of this mess. I mean, your church is filled with people, and people have problems. I've had people try to manipulate me. People try to control me. I've had this and that. I'm just going to just forget about it. I'm going to get out of church... I'm just going to go off by myself. It's between me and Jesus. We're just going to live, you know, I'm going to live for the Lord, do the best I can. And I'm going to honor Jesus. That sounds wonderful. 
except that is dishonoring Jesus. I better read these. You ready? I'm going to give you five points. Number one, honor opens the door to receive provision and blessing. Without honor, you can't receive the blessing. It will be diminished at best, if not completely cut off. God has established those chains of authority. Chains, I'm not talking about being bound up. I'm, I'm talking about chain of command. I'm talking about just the way that it flows, the levels from the top, from the throne, all the way down to us. You see, it flows to me through various forms. I'll use myself as an example. Number one, it flows from the Father through the Son to the Holy Spirit to me in an individual manner. But then also, it flows through the government. I'm talking about in the natural realm. It flows through the government, the president, the houses of Congress, the state governments, the local county, and then city governments, and so forth. It flows to me through that channel also. It flows to me through the channel as far as ministry, by those that I submit myself to. Now, CK and I at this particular point are not members of an organized denominational group or structure. We have been, but we are submitted to ministers that we esteem very highly, that we honor and respect. We do the right governmental things, we do the right spiritual things within the home the stuff that God has given me as a husband then flows down to my wife and my children my grandchildren so we have different hookups and different blessings and different power releases that come through those different hookups. That make sense? So is it possible to cut off and stop one or more of those but still receive from some others? Yeah. That's why I told you I'm not preaching a legalistic thing that you guys have to all submit to me and do whatever I say. You know, give me your firstborn. <laughs> Sign over the title of your car. Never miss a Sunday. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about honoring and respecting because it is due. Number two. Honor goes both ways in any relationship. God said, honor me and I'll honor you. Honor, don't let anybody tell you that they are over you and you have to honor them, but they're unwilling to honor you. Now that doesn't relieve you of your responsibility of showing honor, but it does show that there's something wrong with the relationship and with the person. That's going to lead us into some of these others. Number three, honoring others is a way of honoring God. Does that make sense? Because he said to do it. He's the one who set it up. Here's the system. Here's the kingdom. This is how it flows. This is how it works. This is my system. And so when you honor the system, when you honor these relationships, then you honor God. You honor what he has done. Here's number four. You can show honor to others or their position even if you disagree with or don't trust them. Hey, 
As long as I mentioned uh, President Trump earlier, and by the way, did any of you catch that when, um, was it the Prime Minister of China or President? What was he called? Anyhow, Prime Minister? That's what I was thinking. When the Chinese Prime Minister was here, and it seemed that President Trump and him got along a little bit better than what people expected, did any of you catch that when he was here, that President Trump had his grandchildren come in and sing a Chinese folk song in Mandarin to the Prime Minister. And it so affected the Prime Minister, he felt so honored. Something happened within him. Nobody's ever done that before. Showing honor. Number five. Honor is not the same thing as liking or agreeing with someone. <laughs> if you don't honor those you can't agree with, then it's not really honor you are showing for those that you do agree with. It's conditional allegiance that can be rescinded any time you get upset. And see, that's the biggest problem right now with the liberal progressive, atheistic, carnal, socialistic people that are in America right now. It's because they are absolutely upset with the changes because they saw for at least eight years, if not longer, the direction of the nation going in one direction. The direction of the body of Christ seemingly following somewhat in that direction. And in that whole mess, I'm talking about the belief structure, the philosophy, the political mindedness in far left. All right, let's just get down and dirty. I'm talking about Jezebel. Within Jezebel, there is no respect. There is no real, true honor. Therefore, when Jezebel was dethroned politically, spiritually over America, then what happened is that that whole group became what? Angry. Punishing, violent. And what does that show? It shows that they never even really had respect for themselves. You cannot, are you following what I'm saying? If you don't honor people you disagree with, then you're not really honoring people that you agree with. Honor manifests unconditionally. President Trump won the election and half of the nation, well, I don't know if that's completely true, I, I think it's a much smaller segment, maybe about 20% of the nation got upset and have been trying everything that they can to stop him. And I have to tell you what it is. All you got to do is turn on the news. Don't you get tired of watching all that junk? Well, God is too. That's why I'm preaching this sermon. One of the reasons. That didn't happen when 
not with the visceral hatred when President Obama was elected. Now I'm meddling, I know, but listen to me. The Republicans in general did not do that because they held at least a basic honor. And I know there was a lot of them that did some stupid things, but they held a basic honor and respect for the position for the presidency. You don't see that among this dishonoring group for President Trump. They have no respect for the office. Oh, well, we respect the office, and that's why we don't want him in there. No, that's not true at all. That's a complete fabrication. It's an illusion. You don't understand honor. But God does. And God is pulling his church back to a place of understanding and operating in the spiritual power of honor. That's why I was so upset when the Lord gave me that vision and showed me those people in, um, in the United Kingdom that were dishonoring the seers. And he comes down hard on those things because it is despising him and his name. I'm so glad that as I'm preaching this morning, I'm looking now at the faces of people who understand honor and understand respect. Over the years, there have been a lot of people who have dishonored CK and I. We usually keep our mouths shut. Sometimes that in a governmental system and just uh, uh, administering church affairs and stuff, you have to confront and deal with things. I've had to deal with a lot of people over the years. And they always thought, or, or I will put it this way, it seems that they usually thought it was over some form of a disagreement of how things should be done or anything else, when it wasn't at all. It was over dishonor, disrespect. Well, who do you think you are? You're no better than I am. Remember in Numbers? What is it that got Miriam and Aaron? Well, we have visions. We prophesy just like Moses does. And God said, I speak face to face with Moses. And leprosy came on Miriam because of their dishonor. It had nothing to do with disagreement. It had to do with disrespect. It's time that we as believers learn how to respect and honor one another even during disagreements. That doesn't mean you have to keep silent in disagreements. Like I said earlier, that doesn't mean that you become a doormat. You let people do anything and everything they want. That's stupid. That has nothing to do with honor. But showing honor and respect to others in the body of Christ, to those that are in political office, to those who are in the fivefold ministry. Showing it to God is extremely important because those are the avenues whereby God gets so much of the blessing to us to be released in our lives. <laughs> wow. Now, let me kind of summarize and bring this all to uh, some sense of closure today. What I see in the spiritual realm, because I've been praying about this all week, I see two things. Now follow me, because they both go hand in hand. Remember that what I've taught you 
is that in every situation there's, uh, or at least in most situations that we're confronted with in our daily lives, that there's what the devil is doing and there's what Jesus is doing. There are two sides to the coin. And a lot of people, they look at problematic situations and it's easy for them to see what the devil is doing. But it takes a more spiritually mature person to train themselves to look and see what Jesus is doing. Jesus didn't cause the problem. But he is doing something, working through the problem to bring deliverance and blessing to our lives and undo what the enemy or what the world is trying to accomplish through the problem. Okay, you got that? Okay, so this is it. The first point that I wanted to make is that in the spiritual realm, I see a, an uprising of and a manifesta manifestation, a manifesting, better way of saying it, of demonic spirits to punish, attack those that are in authority. Even in the body of Christ. You gotta understand something. For the first time in history, God has used the newly um, released and restored prophets and prophetic office. That's why it, it's called, for the last 20 years, it's been called the apostolic prophetic movement. Because the restoring of those offices to the church so that in a worldwide manner they're accepted and they have the ability to function the way that God has set things up for them to function and, and to do, the blessing of the body of Christ, okay? They were in the mainstay, they were in the forefront of everything that was going on in this election. They're the ones. Now, I, I, again, I'm not leaving out other believers that don't know anything about that or don't subscribe to the prophetic movement in any way because we know that 83% of all evangelicals voted for Donald Trump. Okay? But there was there, this situation where the prophets were in the forefront most of the time. Guess who is receiving the biggest backlash and attacks right at this particular point. They're coming against the prophets. The demons are coming against the prophets. They're coming against everybody, okay? Everybody that took a stand in the spirit, everybody that's praying in the spirit, everybody who's honoring God, honoring what he's doing, all of that. Now, that's what the devil's doing. But now, let me tell you what I see on the other side of the coin. In the spiritual realm right now, according to what the Lord specifically spoke to me, he is restoring honor. He is not only going to protect the prophets, protect his children, all the members of the body of Christ, because you're not exempt. He is restoring honor honor to you he is protecting you he is restoring you and he is bringing us to a place to where we in the body of Christ are go being stronger than we were before it ever began there is a restorative process happening am I saying it well enough sometimes I lack words I wish I could just paint a picture with my heart so that you could see the whole thing. It's happening. It's happening. I'm going to read that uh, word that the Lord gave me again to emphasize what I just said. Honor has been a diminishing quality in America for years, but I am beginning to purge dishonor. He's talking about the spirits. By restoring honor to my body on earth. 
So as a body of Christ gets it right, the world follows because we have the influence in the world. Yes, there's a devil out there. But our influence changes things. Praise the Lord. So, that's what I see going on right now. I didn't want to preach on it. I told the Lord, I'd rather preach on something else. Can I talk about healing? <laughs> Can I just pump the people up, tell them how good they are? How about new creation in Christ? I, I had a hundred different subjects that I wanted to preach on today. And the Lord, had, he usually does, he just says, are you going to do what I told you to do? <laughs> and I go, always, Lord. Thanks for listening, but I honor you. <laughs> See, we had a little bit of a discussion, but I honored him in obedience. <laughs> Praise God. I am totally amazed and praying for now, let me change that sentence. I am totally amazed at the sheer disrespect. It's disgusting to me, not only in the world, but also in the body of Christ that people have for ministers. I know there's a lot of abusive ministers out there, and they need to be removed from up. They, they need to get saved. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Holy Spirit needs to thump their melon. Get them delivered from all that crap. You don't abuse and you don't dishonor God's people. I'm not for that. Never have been. CK and I are, we teach third heaven authority. We teach um, grace. Do you know that we were some of the early ones? A number of years ago, 20 years ago, in teaching on abuse in the church. I don't want to get into that. But it's true. It's true. We were on the forefront. Um, yours truly did some radio shows with some of the prominent leaders in America dealing with Abuse in the church. Why? Because I'm a trained abuse counselor. And I can point. You Take me into a legalistic abusive church and I can point out within five minutes all of the dynamics of where the abuse is coming from, what the dynamics of the abuse are, and what needs to be changed. Now, that's a rather bold statement, so it might take me 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't like abuse. From day one, right here, we've made an agreement. The agreement is, I won't manipulate and control you if you don't try to manipulate and control me. We'll love, honor, and respect one another, and we'll all get along fine, and we'll all make it to heaven powerfully. Mm-hmm. I despise religious spirits, controlling spirits, and abusive spirits. I won't put up with them. And I equally despise dishonoring spirits. Well, I better quit talking or I'm just going to dig myself into something here. But at least you know where I stand. God loves you, CK and I love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, I realize that there is a movement right now in the spiritual realm something that you are doing. The angels are involved. The Holy Spirit is involved. Uh, the commands from the throne are there to bring honor back to the body of Christ. 
to resurge that revelation and understanding of honor. How it is a true release of power. A dynamic in the kingdom that you will not do without because it is part of the structural basis of your kingdom. So Lord, we pray, teach us to honor. Bring that revelation understanding to us, Lord. Teach us how to honor you by honoring others and all of those positions that you have set up, all of those relationships that you have introduced to bring authority and power and blessing to our lives. Teach us how to honor it even when people that occupy those places may not be people of honor may not be people that we agree with. We are not going to blindly come in line with them and do anything that disrespects you, but we will honor what you have set up. Teach us. Teach us to do that. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 The Lord just spoke to me and he said that there are that there's a Lord, how do I get that out? Okay. Just just let me pray over you and just listen to it as it comes out. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your people. I pray for everybody right now in this room and even those that may be watching by video, Lord God. There are areas where there are demonic spirits that have been trying to sow confusion, distraction. They've been buffeting. They have caused pain and woundedness. There are different situations there that keep the people off balance so that the dishonor can try to have a way in their lives. No. In Jesus' name, I pray against it. And I pray for revelation to come to every single person to see by discerning of spirits, by your wisdom, what it is and what to do about it. as hearts come in line with you and the Spirit's will for their lives. I thank you for that, Father God. I thank you because I rebuke, I bind, and I cast out those foul, deceptive spirits in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we come in line with destiny for your people. Destiny. What is their destiny in you? That's what we want. We pray for that destiny to manifest. We pray for your blessings to be in their lives. I'm talking about health, prosperity, wisdom, maturity, signs, wonders, miracles, gifts of the Holy Spirit, third heaven authority, Third heaven revelation. Mm -hmm. Third heaven manifestation in their lives. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' blessed name. And everyone said? Amen. 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 You may be seated, and as you do, would you go ahead and fill out your tithes and offerings for today? Did you know that giving tithes and offerings is showing honor to God? <laughs> Not only because God set it up that way, but he actually said that. Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your possessions. You know, the Bible talks a lot about honoring father and mother. It says to honor, for the husbands to honor their wives. It 
is to honor the prophets and the fivefold. Honor one another, giving preference to one another. Giving honor to whom honor is due. Honoring what is seemingly the lesser gifts. Honoring the ministries of other people. Honoring the widows who are really widows. Honoring those who labor in ministry over you. Honor, honor, honor. So as you give today, give in honor and give with honor. Hallelujah. If Cho Cheche Lakiti on die. Hmm. If you give by bank card, a white envelope there that you can fill out the information on it. If you give by checks, write them to Word of Life. If you give by cash and want a receipt, make sure that you put your name and address on it. Write in English, not tongues. We're good, but sometimes we're not that good. Hallelujah. Those that are watching by video, if you want to get in on this offering right now and give in honor to release honor through your life, the anointing in this revelation that's flowing right now, just go to our website, wordoflifeworldoutreach.org and give through the donation page. The last thing that I'm going to say before we receive the offering into the ministry is this is part of the confrontation that's been happening in the spiritual realm. Now over about the last four weeks, there's been an open confrontation, a release of authority, and it's shifting now to this area of honor. Praise God. Gentlemen, could you come up and help me in receiving the offering? Let's pray over this. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we pray over this offering now. And as a people give, Lord God, they give out of honor to you. They give out of honor to what you have placed within CK and I and Brian in this ministry right now. Honor to what's happening in the spiritual realm. And because of that honor, because of that obedience, Lord God, I just ask that you right now would release a breakthrough in their finances, that there would be a miraculous anointing for supernatural finances to come upon their lives now in the name of Jesus Christ. I thank you for it because I consider it done, because I know your heart. And if we honor you, you will honor us. If we honor you with our finances, you will honor us with yours. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.